Hello everyone out there. I hope you had a wonderful Easter week. It was a very nice day here. And because it was Easter week, I thought it would be nice to end Easter week with a reflection upon the Holy Week that we just experienced. We're going to use these 12 eggs. They're called resurrection eggs. I got this idea from Darcy Stewart. She, when she was a little girl, her mom and she did Easter uh, resurrection eggs to help understand the events that happened between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. So I thought that would be a great reflection since we just had Easter Sunday. So we have 12 eggs and each egg represents an important event in the week between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. So we're going to start with the first egg and each egg has a specific Bible verse and the first verse is Matthew 21 9. It has a picture of a donkey. It says, Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So our first egg, we open up and there's It's a leaf. We have a leaf. What could the leaf mean on Palm Sunday? It represents a palm branch. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and the crowd praises him with palm branches. So people wave palm branches while Jesus rode in to town, to, into Jerusalem on a donkey. Very cool for that one. So that's our first egg. Our second egg is deals with Matthew 26 verses 14 and 15. We have coins here. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him thirty pieces of silver. So what do you think we would have in these 30 pieces of silver. So you know that they were trying to get a hold of Jesus and they were trying to bribe Judas Iscariot to see if he could give up Jesus to him. So egg number two is silver. I've got three coins here that represent the 30 pieces of silver. Judas betrayed Jesus and is paid 30 pieces of silver. So Judas was giving up Jesus and betraying his loyalty to Jesus. Okay, egg number three. Matthew 26, tw verses 26 through 28. And we have a cup, cup here. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is actually Maundy Thursday. So the Thursday before Easter Sunday, this is the day that Jesus has communion with his disciples. So let's look what we have in our third egg. we have a thimble that represents a cup. So egg three, bread and wine, it's the first communion. The first communion with Jesus. Okay, our fourth piece of information for Holy Week comes from Matthew 26, 39. And we have praying hands. He, we meaning Jesus, went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And what do we have here? 
we have a little prayer scroll. Prayer in the garden. Jesus goes to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. And he prayed deeply about what was to happen. Okay, the next big significant event, Mark 15, 15. We have a whip here. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. So Pilate traded Barabbas for Jesus' life. And that is what the crowds uh, supposedly were wanting. So let's look in the next egg. And we see a piece of leather, which is what they used for whips. And it says the rope, which is also known as a whip. Jesus is arrested in the garden and tied up. Oh no, Jesus is arrested. Put the whip there. Okay, next event. Matthew 27, 29. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed to his, the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And so we have a crown here, a crown of thorns. And if you've ever been pricked by a rose bush or something with thorns, you know that thorns are not very um, nice to be played with. So, oops, I dropped an egg. So we have a crown of thorns here. Can you see the thorns on it? I'm being very careful not to uh, get pricked by the crown of thorns. And it says, the crown of thorns. Soldiers make a crown of thorns to place on Jesus' head, calling him the king of the Jews. Okay, our next egg. Matthew 27, 31, and we see a picture of nails. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. So this is getting into Good Friday. And what do we have here? We have nails couple of nails here and their note says Jesus is nailed to the cross begins Good Friday Put the nails there. our next significant event on Good Friday Matthew 27 35 then they crucified him and divided his garments Casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. So they cast lots, meaning they kind of bargained, rolled dice for his clothing. And so we have a piece of dice here, die. It's used in gambling and playing games. So dice, a soldier cast lots for Jesus's clothing. So we have dice here. Okay, the next significant event in Jesus' crucifixion, John 19, 34. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. So in this blue egg here, We have a spear made of wood, and it says a soldier pierced Jesus' side with a spear before he was brought down from the cross. So by spearing him and watching the blood come down, they decided that Jesus was dead on the cross. 
Next event, Matthew twenty seven fifty nine. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had honed out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. So what do we have here? A piece of linen. So they removed linen or removed Jesus from the cloth from the cross and clothed him with clean uh, linen and laid him in his tomb. And what do we have here? We have some linen. This is cotton. Joseph wraps Jesus' body in strips of linen and places it in the tomb. Okay, we're getting down to the end, so that's getting into the weekend. And we now have Matthew twenty-seven sixty-six. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. So we laid a tomb in front of, or a stone in front of the tomb so that no one could get in and no one could get out. And we have a rock, a stone. A large stone is placed in front of Jesus' tomb along with soldiers to guard his body. Okay, this last day. Now this last egg represents Easter Sunday. So we've come the full week. Matthew twenty-eight twenty-five. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And we open up our last egg. Um, there's nothing in it. The last egg is empty. On the third day, the, women came, the woman came to his tomb and found it empty. An angel greets them and informs them that Jesus has risen from the dead. He's no longer here. He rose. He is now in heaven, seated next to his father. And all of the truths that Jesus said would happen, happened. He is no longer in the tomb. He is alive and he has risen. So he will be ever, ever, forever in heaven. And he has fulfilled the prophecy of saving us to have eternal life by dying for our sins. And that is the whole purpose of Jesus' life and the Holy Week from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. And I hope you have had a very nice Easter. And the next time Easter comes around next year, maybe you and your family could make a set of resurrection eggs so you can play out the events of Holy Week as well. Have a great day.